Hi, let's talk about some data validation concepts that you should do if you're a web developer. So data validation isn't exciting, but it's super important. Here are some reasons why you should be concerned about it. First of all, we want to prevent invalid data. So check your usernames, check your input before you go ahead and print those license plates. Secondly, you can use data validation as a way to prevent hacking. And so when you ask for a user ID, don't accept SQL statements. Also, make sure that your application is ready to go. So invalid data is one good reason why your application can crash. So predict it and prevent it. Now, where should you put your validation? And here is the main point of the video, is where and how you're going to make it happen. Later, we'll do a tutorial so that you can see how it works in MVC.net using a Microsoft C Sharp application. So first of all, your top layer of your application is your JavaScript. You can run this right in the web page without any server action being involved. It prevents extra traffic. And so putting in JavaScript va validation is certainly a good idea. But you shouldn't rely solely on that because the user can certainly just shut off JavaScript. It's an option in your web browser. And also there are other tools that can obviate the uh, form submit options in a, web, in a web page. Also, think about your presentation layer. So you've got yourself uh, form validation going on and it works on the server. So that way that the users can't get in there and hack away at the website and modify the code before they submit it. Use a framework such as .NET MVC, or if you're in Java, you work with Spring or something similar. Also, think about your business rules. And so in the controller of your application, you're going to have certain things like, am I going to accept a user input? Or am I going to go to the database and get some information? And so your business layer has control of the data. Check it there to make sure that it's actually the data you want. When you get down to the data access layer, you're thinking about writing SQL code. And so you're writing select statements and insert statements. It's almost too late here because if the data came from the form in an invalid way, this is not a good place to check to see if it's ready to go into the database. Uh, you should just be working with your SQL inserts and joins and your, and your deletes here. And accepting the data from above in a valid state is probably a better idea. So when you get to the bottom and you have the database uh, tables actually designed and you put in the uh, field limitations such as a limit of characters or the string or the integer or whatever you're expecting, if you've just relied on the table design to do your data validation, your app's going to crash and your users are not going to have a good experience. Also think about in the business layer, you might have some extra third-party applications that you could install and you could integrate them here. And once again, if you get to the bottom and your database crashes, your application will fail. And do not rely on your database constraints then. Here's some best practice then for when and where you should do your data validation. So first of all, build your application with a plan. Use an N-tiered approach. Architecting your program is the best way to find out a good spot where your data validation can occur. So you can see at the top of the presentation layer, that's like the JavaScript validation. The logic layer in the middle is where you should probably be thinking about your data validation rules. And then of course, at the data layer at the bottom where you're interacting with the databases, uh, if you can rely on level two to be accurate, then level three will work better. Once again, don't rely on JavaScript only. It is a valid tool to use it will prevent extra trips to the server, but don't use this as your backstop. This is for prevention. This is to help the server not have to do everything, but it certainly is not a secure way to validate your data. And here's an example of what would happen if you relied on your database to do your constraints and validation rules there. Your app's going to crash. Your user is going to wonder what happened. They are going to think you don't know what you're doing. And the exceptions are not meant for the user to see. They're meant for the programmers. And you should be able to intercept these and fix them so that the user never sees this screen. In the following tutorial, we'll actually do some data validation in the model. And so you can see here that this example shows that when we create a class called appointment, we are going to uh, put some tags in front of each property to say, 
what the minimum and the maximums are, if it's a required field, what type of data that we're going to expect. And so this is a good centralized location for you to do data validation. Your data validation will occur in the model and not in the form. The form will actually display the item, but the rules for when the item is valid or not are defined uh, beforehand. And so the MVC framework here allows you to centralize your rules so that they can be maintained in, the, in one location. Also think that your rules, if they are maintained in one central location, they can be applied to multiple different interfaces. So we have a WinForms app, we have a web app, and a mobile app. All of these would run in C-sharp.net development, but all of them have the central rule in the class where the data is defined. So in the next video, we're going to do a tutorial, an example of how to code this. So we'll take the appointment example you see here in the center and apply it to an MVC web application in ASP.NET.